wave. There's a video, so there you go. There's a video, so. Silky! Hey, very safe. I love you too. Our favorite, Didi Arthur. Yay! Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, with my 6A classroom teacher, Security. She immediately welcomed us with open arms and taught us about the culture of Maharashtra and helped us feel comfortable in the school on our first day. Since I had so much time every day to talk to her, I was able to understand more clearly the way of life for people who lived in Jalgaon. She showed me how much kindness and generosity the people there have inherently and taught me how I can find similarities besides the cultural differences and the language barriers that we faced. Security was a role model for me because of the way she interacted with her students. She was not just their teacher, but acted as their mother as well. She made sure that the students were confident and happy with their learning, despite the often harsh reality of their home lives. The empathy given to her students has also made them better about themselves and more motivated to do well in school. Being able to witness this firsthand for two months made me more passionate about helping those living in poor conditions with the same warmth and kindness as Security has for her students. Oh, <laughs> 
discovered a lot about how important every role of each family member is. It's not only, only the immediate family that lives together and provides for each other, but in most households, the entire kin work together to get by each and every day. Because this is how the family dynamics are in India, the students we worked with were highly affected by problems that occurred in their family. If their uncle was an alcoholic or their grandpa was ill, it would directly cause financial and emotional stress on that student. I learned the significance of the family and that taking a child out of a broken home is not the solution to the problem, but could cause more issues to the child's development. I got to see the homes of some of the students we worked with, and I got to see the little belongings and space they had. This taught me that materials we own isn't what makes us happy, but it's who we are around, the opportunity to be provided with, and the experience we have that bring us joy. It is hard not to be ashamed of the privilege we grew up in, but it reminded me that I can't control where I was born, and I will use this acknowledgement to my advantage in my future while I work with children and vulnerable families and homes. <laughs> she danced with us. Time we spent with her was one of the best time we had in school. Today, we, she will go back to her home. We, we will miss you. We all love you. You are kind and loving. We will never forget you. Please do come again. <laughs> She likes to spend time with the children. She talks. Uh, she talks with us. She share. Uh, she shared us. She shared with us about uh, Nebraska, uh, her family, her dog, Moka. She is. She is. Uh, she is very nice. She shared with, with us uh, her feelings. She. Uh, she is very. Uh, she is very nice. She shared with us her feelings. Uh, recently she had visited to my house and she, uh, she has visited to my house to seem uh, to so comfortable with my uh, with my family Jesse, uh, she uh, we love you Didi we will miss you I am going to speak on Nikki Didi it is our privilege to meet the people from various backgrounds in the school. It was a great surprise for me when the Nikki Didi came to our school along with her friends. We enjoyed very much. They came to our house also for meeting us. And they saw we enjoyed very much. We know that how to handle the situations and we play games also. I enjoyed very much. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am going to speak on Nikki Didi. Nikki Didi, she looks very beautiful. She is very quiet and calm. She visited at my home and we were having a lot of fun. She taught us many games like uh, hands, seven, seven up, thumbs up, hands up. Hands up, Serena. Dance game, etc. We will miss you, Nikiridi. Thank you. I am Krishna Chauhan from 6th day and I am going to speak about Nikiridi. She comes in our class with a smile every day. She taught us many things. She taught games like thumbs ups, head seven ups, and the dancing game. We enjoy with her every day. She came at my home with the other Didi's. We take out photos with her. 
and last Saturday there was Gudi Padwa celebration, so she was excited for it and she enjoyed a lot. Thank you. Hello everyone. I'm today I'm going to speak about Taylor Didi. Didi. Didi are so kind and nice by nature. You shared so many things with us and and you helped me in my studies. I spent very nice time with you. I enjoyed your company. Thank you. <laughs> Taylor Didi won Taylor Didi spent um much time with us. Didi's Didi's name is Taylor Rani Baldwin. Didi's cat name is Oliver. She told us many things about her. And she taught she Very soon, 
uh, very soon we will learn how to do uh, how to type emails and we will she will be in touch with us we will send and receive emails from her thank you thodi dumli re ho sach rim jim thamli re tujhi maachi thodi dumli re If you know Rich Bischoff, you know being seaweed means to be flexible and adaptable in any and every situation to the best of your abilities. India is a country where being seaweed is very important. My biggest seaweed moment while in India would probably be at the Delhi airport on our way to Jalgaon coming from the US. JC's and I's bags weighed way too much and they told us that we would have to pay 11,000 rupees a piece to get our luggage on the plane, which is almost equivalent to about $185. Um, none of us had enough cash and we also hadn't um, checked our credit cards into working inter internationally. So we proceeded to cry, throw away all our shampoo and conditioner, <laughs> extra food, and after being begging the woman at the counter that we were just trying to get to Jao Gan to teach the lady felt so bad she allowed for our bags to finally go through we were put in the front of the line in security and had to take a golf cart to multiple wrong terminals before finally reaching the right one where the plane had been delayed because they were waiting on us after just a few hours in india we had became seaweed One day we were sitting with our good friend Nirja and she mentioned to us that there is a meditation spa on campus and we asked her if she would take us sometime. I'm not sure what the other girls thought but I thought it was just on the roof of the hostels. It ended up being about a mile up the biggest hill closest to campus. Although it was a trek up there, we ended up going up there at least once a week after Nirja showed us. We would do our homework, get some sun, or just walk up for exercise that day. It was it was so beautiful but there was always that fear that monkeys would come up and have we have to fight them off. One time a security guard came over to me and Taylor with a wooden stick and handed it to us and said monkeys might be coming and just walked away. <laughs> we had mangoes with us and we continued to eat them even though fruit is what attracts the monkeys. Don't worry, we made it out without getting attacked by the monkeys. He was just being nice and warning us. <laughs>
every single meal that I ate while I was there. I didn't have too much experience with Indian food before this, but I'm extremely grateful for being exposed to all of these unique and amazing foods. Food is culture and just as much part of the experience as anything else that we did. My favorite food while I was there is called jelly bee, which is basically just fried dough and ghee, which is a type of butter, and then dipped into a sugary syrup. <laughs> it's incredibly sweet and it's actually served for breakfast, but it tasted more like a dessert to all of us. And the kitchen staff was always really eager to help introduce us to new foods and see how much spice any of us could really handle. The fact that we were able to go and openly embrace this part of Indian culture has made this experience that much more enriching for all of us. I grew tremendously as a future educator while at the Anabudi schools. I know now that being an educator is a lot more than just teaching. The role of the teacher is not only to educate, but to understand the unique children and to care for them as if they were your own. I dealt a lot with processing the way the classrooms ran and the way the teachers presented their subjects, which most of the time differed completely from the way a classroom would run here in the United States. What I grasped from these encounters was how not Everything that is different is bad. It is just that, different. I was able to adapt to these differences and completely immerse myself in their classrooms. In the end, allowing myself to be more accepting and to return with new methods of working with these children. I feel that after having the experience that I had in India, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that I'm right where I need to be for the track of my future, working with these students who come from vulnerable populations. The bonds I formed with my 28 students in class 5B will be with me forever. Having the opportunity to see the children eager to learn and constantly radiant, even with their circumstances at home, was more humbling than I could ever have imagined. When first coming to Anabudi English Medium School, I was really looking forward to learning more about music education in India. Even though they didn't have vocal lessons while I was there, dance was a big part of their celebrations and presentations. All of the kids at Anabudi are so talented in most of the arts that the school has to offer, and it became apparent to me after home visits that they didn't have the pastime activities that the kids in America had. That's why they were so good at dancing and singing and writing poems and drawing. My favorite memory isn't just one day or one class period, but it was the times that I really got to know the kids at each grade by being around them in a setting that wasn't sitting in a desk. Not only did I get to laugh with them, but they definitely got to laugh at me when I was trying to learn their traditional dance styles. Getting to act goofy with these students was really how I personally bonded with them, and those are the moments that I got to see their real personalities shine.
flexible. When things didn't go as we originally planned, I would get upset and defeated at first, but throughout the trip, I found that everything happens for a reason. Most of the plans got, that got rescheduled ended up being some of my best experiences. So I learned to have peace and letting life fall into place. For my first time in India, it is easy to feel overwhelmed by the busy streets and just massive amounts of people. But one thing I learned is to find beauty in the chaos and not let my westernized perceptions block me from finding this kind of beauty in places that are simply different from my own. Although I've traveled to other countries before, my, my time in India was a complete culture shock at first. My biggest takeaway from those two months is that you never know what it's like to be the minority until you are the minority. I'm so happy that I got to experience this with people that welcomed me with open arms. My biggest takeaway from my experience while in India is that differences are not always bad. India is a different country in all aspects of life, including culture, religion, social context, and their education system. I learned to acknowledge these differences and I allowed myself to be fully immersed within them, leaving me more open-minded and more open-hearted than I could have ever imagined. So remember, wherever you go, just let it be. Always embody radiance. That all is well. And everyone is just searching for their own happiness. <laughs>